The movie starts with a man piddling down the bike trail to his home. He starts to undress on the porch before noticing his wife sitting on the stairs and staring at him. After a mysterious eye contact, she goes up the stairs after a few seconds and he takes himself to a room just beside the stairs. A little girl is seen dragging a chair from one room to another. She settles at the dining table and asks Alexa to play Old MacDonald, which she begins to sing along to. Her mom, frustrated, shouts at her to turn off the song, but Trixie pays her no attention, still happily singing along. A visitor steps in, Trixie's mom storms off, and Trixie's dad sets a juice box in front of her. The visitor's name is Melissa, and she seems to be the babysitter. She addresses Trixie's dad as Mr. Van Allen, the same man from earlier who had pedaled down the bike trail to his home. Trixie's mom yells at Alexa to stop playing Old MacDonald and Trixie asks her to resume. Trixie's dad asks Trixie if he's aware she's upsetting her mom and she states she is aware. Vic goes up the stairs at his wife's beckoning. She asks him to help pick between the dress she has on and a red dress. He tells her she's beautiful in the one she has on. And when she asks what shoe should go with the dress, he tells her the ones he got her in New York. He gets them on her command and helps put them on. She asks him if he's aware she loves him, and he replies that it's time they go. Vic and his wife arrive at an event and get together with their friends. One of the friends expresses disbelief that Van's daughter was allowed to pick between public and private school. And Van's wife replies she was kicked out of a lot of schools while growing up, and she's just happy her daughter is receptive to the idea of education. Vic's wife notices a blonde-haired man walk into the event. She excitedly approaches him, his name is Joel, giving him a hug. Vic had been watching the interaction, and a bartender asking him how he's doing barely pulls his attention away. She leads him out the back door of the house, towards the pool. The party is much livelier at the back with a band playing and people dancing. Van is still inside the house, patrolling, seemingly looking for his wife and Joel. From a window, he sees his wife and Joel on a cushion outside, passionately kissing. She looks up, noticing him but doesn't necessarily pull away from Joel. A friend approaches Vic, and she notices Joel and Melinda, Vic's wife, dancing. Melinda walks in and asks Vic if he would like to dance, which he declines. Vic's friend states Joel came because Melinda asked Jess and Grant to invite him. Vic replies Melinda can invite whoever she pleases. Vic's friend expresses she and his other friends are worried. Vic's friend states she knows Melinda and him love each other, which he admits, but she doesn't want Vic to appear foolish. The conversation is interrupted by someone informing Vic, Melinda is drunk dancing on top of a piano, to which he decides to attend. She eventually steps down from the piano and starts to play a song and sing, capturing people's attention enough to sing along. Vic goes back to the bartender and Joel approaches him there. Joel expresses he's grateful for the hospitality Vic and Melinda have shown him. Vic asks if he knows the name, Martin McRae. Joel identifies he's the guy that went missing. Vic tells him Martin was also seeing his wife and now he's dead because he killed him. Joel asks if Melinda knows and Vic states of course she doesn't. Joel states he feels threatened, but he doesn't believe Vic actually killed someone. Vic replies that he doesn't have to believe. Joel starts to leave but Melinda notices and intercepts by the door. He states he'll call her and takes his leave. Vic and Melinda head back to their car. Melinda asks Vic what he said to Joel and he replies, nothing. She insists but he doesn't take the bait. Soon, they're driving back home. Vic helps his wife undress and he mentions he wishes she'd gotten with someone more intelligent. She mentions Joel might be dumb, but she feels herself around him. Vic gets together with his friends, and they address the issue of Vic threatening Joel. Vic is still in denial that his wife and Joel are intimate, and his friend states it's rather obvious that they are. 
His friends are not okay with Melinda's actions and feel he needs to do something about it. The news gets to Melinda and she's upset. She insists Joel comes for dinner and Vic apologizes to him. Joel accepts the invitation and shows up. He talks about moving to New Mexico for a new job, and Melinda proposes they'd visit him there. Tension builds between Melinda and Vic, and Joel excuses himself to the restroom. Melinda gives Vic a drink to give Joel, stating she'll leave them alone for a bit. Joel expects an apology, but Vic states he killed Martin. Plus, he called Joel and Uber so it's time to leave. Vic and his family are at another event where the conversation leads to knowing he invented the chip used in military drones. He asks a woman to dance with him after she states his wife is very beautiful. Melinda expresses jealousy on their ride back home, and it leads to them getting intimate. Vic is another event when he gets a call alerting him about a failed transaction for piano lessons. He does a little investigation and it lands him at an event where Charles Delisle is about to perform. He stays long enough to see Melinda show up before he drives home. On the news, Vic hears they've discovered the body of missing 33-year-old Martin McRae in the woods. When Melinda comes back home, Vic breaks the news to her. Vic and a friend are at the hangout spot where Charles plays. Vic's friend mentions they've caught the murderer behind Martin's death which should reduce the rumors. Vic states Charles has been giving Melinda piano lessons. Melinda comes home the next morning and Vic is in the living room waiting for her. He confronts her about where she spent the night, her transaction to Charles, and her drunk state. She proves difficult, accessing his jealousy. He asks her to stop seeing Charles, and she asks right back what he'll do if she doesn't. He tries to make her see they have a child, and they are a family, but she states that was his choice. She probes a divorce, but he ignores her. She finally goes up the stairs stating his life would be boring if he were married to someone else. Melinda and Vic are at a party, and Charles shows up. Melinda introduces him to the audience and asks him to play a song for them. Afterwards, Melinda personally introduces Charles to Vic. The party cools down and Vic is looking for Melinda. He sees her stepping out of a room in a swimsuit with Charles. They both head to the swimming pool and Vic follows, watching them. It starts to rain and everyone eventually heads back in to continue the party. Few minutes later, a body floats up to the pool surface. Melinda has been searching for Charles. She steps out the door leading to the pool and starts screaming for everyone's attention. They recover Charles's body from the pool and try to administer CPR before an ambulance would arrive. He's deceased when the police arrive. The police interrogate everyone about the events leading to Charles' decease. They ask if he was drunk and if drugs were involved. Melinda tells the police Charles' death is in an accident and Vic killed him. Someone mentions Charlie's head accidentally hit the pool while he was pulled up. Vic is called to a separate room for questioning. He's asked if Melinda was sleeping with Charles and Vic states he doesn't know. He's asked if he killed Charles and he says no, he didn't. Vic asks Melinda if she wants a divorce. He also asks if she's afraid of him since she believes he killed Charlie, and she states she isn't afraid because she's the reason he killed for. As Vic rides his bike along the streets, he recalls killing Charles by strangling him while they were still in the pool. Vic goes to Don's home and confronts him about David, a man Vic believes is a private investigator Don hired to follow him. Vic watches Melinda meet up with yet another possible lover. It's late at night at home when Vic overhears a conversation from Melinda with someone, talking about moving to Brazil and taking their daughter along. Vic approaches Tony, Melinda's latest fascination. He's previously been to the house and acquainted himself with Vic. Vic is driving by and Tony walking. Vic tells him Melinda has been trying to get hold of him because there's a building site she would like him to see. Tony agrees to follow Vic. Vic takes him out to a gorge and kills him before taking his body out to the water to dispose of. He also takes his wallet. 
Melinda goes into Vic's snail room, looking for Vic, and discovers Tony's wallet. On the other side, Vic arrives at the gorge, hoping to do something about Tony's body that has managed to float to surface. While he tries to push the body down with a stick, someone is watching in the distance. It's Don and he has Melinda's scarf Vic claims he's there to retrieve. Don is there long enough to see Tony's hand float out and he takes off running. He gets into his car and drives off, and Vic tries to catch up on his bike. Melinda is at home packing a bag, but Trixie takes the bag, throws it into the pool, stating they're not leaving. Don tries to text his wife, Kelly, he was right, but it's hard to text and keep an eye on the road. Vic eventually trips into Don's path, and to avoid hitting him, Don swerves off course and has an accident, killing himself. After Vic hide the body of Tony, he comes back home and find Melinda on stairs, with the same gaze as we see in the beginning of the movie. Here, it turns out, she has realized how much Vic loves her and she had already burned Tony's wallet without informing authorities. And this movie ends here. Thank you so much for watching this movie. Hope you like our recap. Support us by like and comment on the video. Goodbye and take care.